Pativum Havama He Kavim Kavinam Upama Shravastamam Jeshtara Jam Brahmanam Brahmanas Patana Hashnam Vanu Tibihi Sita Sadanam Shrivakratunda Mahakaya Surya Koti Samaprabha Yirvignam Kurume Deva Sarvakari Shusarvada Siddhi Buddhi Shakti Sahitam Shrima Mahaganadi Patai Namo Namaha Yirvignam Kuru Om Gangana Patai Namaha Namaste so we are starting a series that's going to be my Guru Dakshna to my Sanskrit teacher. We had uh, in 2019 some discussions on Ashtanga Hridaya chapter 3 about Ratucharya and we are supposed to finish our year with some presentations about our understandings of Ratucharya. So, um, Professor Randas is giving lectures in Sanskrit weekly for us for the last two years. We are an Ashtanga Hridaya group from Sanjay Pisharodi Initiative. And um, um, here is going to be my uh, Guru Dakshna. Om Ragadi Rogan Satatana Shaktam Ashe Shakaya Prashutan Ashe Shan Otsu Kyamo Aratidan Jagana Yopur Vavaitya Yanamos to Tasman. Namaste. So, uh, today we are going to discuss the following topics uh, Fundamentals of Rituch for Rituchary Understandings. This is going to be four topics today. Ayana and Kalas, according to Mahabharata and Ashtanga Hridaya. This is the first topic. Propositions for Jyotisha views of Ayanas. This is going to be the second topic. Disclosure in Adana and Visarga Kalas. This is going to be the third. And discussing the understanding of the halves of um, Adana and Visarga Kalas. So, uh, to begin, uh, it's important to contextualize the history or the history or whatever of Mahabharata, the Itihasa. When Bhishma was about to die and he was waiting so the sun would go north again. It would restart the Uttarayana. And since Bhishma is kind of one of the main or the second main character in the Mahabharata Itihasa, in Hinduism this has a great impact. Uh, all times in India people chant the Mahabharata and Ramayana yearly. So um, the first point is that Uttarayana is related to the movement of the earth relating to the stars, not to the sun. This Uttarayana that is uh, um, waited for Bhishma to attain Moksha, you can say that this is from an energetic point of view or whatever, but the main point is that nowadays in India, they uh, celebrate the Makara Sankranti on the January 14th, 15th, and not on the 21 December. Um, this has some importance because the 21 December is going to be a solstice in the North um, Hemisphere is going to be the uh, winter source solstice and in the Southern Hemisphere is going to be the summer solstice. But doesn't matter if you are in the North or in the South, it's going to be a solstice there in the 21 December and 21 June. From a tropical point of view, this means the relation of Earth and Sun. Every year this relation is the same, but every 72 years the relation of the Earth to the stars change a little bit one day. So now we are considering from a sidereal point of view that Makara Rashi or what should be related to Capricorn sign is starting on the 15th January 
but this is not a tropical phenomenon, this is not a uh, weather important issue. So, since Rurutucharya is mainly trying to describe the effects of the seasons in the planet Earth, and is not trying to explain karmic relations between this planet Earth and the stars, we should not understand that Uttarayana starts on the 15th of January. We should, maybe, uh, consider it starting on 21 December. But the main point is that we are not going to be uh, advocating so much about Uttarayana and Dakshinayana because we are going to take the, um, the concept of Adhanakala and Visargakala. Usually they are blended and here we are proposing that they could be splitted so we can still discuss the Uttarayana point of view in Jyotisha but we can protect Ayurveda from being enveloped by sidereal considerations. When I was studying now uh, last December 2019, November, December with Professor Andas, Adhikarana is a Tantra Yukti that is always relating to the context of what we are seeing. So if we say that Uttarayana in Jyotisha is one thing and Uttarayana in Ayurveda is another thing, there is no problem with that, because the Adhikarana, the context, is completely different. But now we are not going to um, be willing to discuss so much about Uttarayana and Dakshinayana. We are going to take this concept as... Because also in the South and the North Hemisphere this changes. So we will say, oh, in 30, 21 December, oh, in 21... Um, June, it's going north, it's going south, it's completely um, problematic from a standpoint of view of a global Ayurveda that we are speaking for our people including India, including Australia, including Europe, including Africa, including North America, including South America. So we are going to put away these north and south directions of the sun and we are going to put the point that it is uh, heating up and it's cooling down. And this is how we are going to start to talk about the uh, Adana Kala and Visarga Kala concepts. Adana should be understood as something that is distracting, is taking away, is uh, kind of killing. And Visarga is when this grab of the sun over the earth is released. So Visarga means to release. When you say Namaha, this is a release of the air. It's the Visarga letter in Sanskrit, that one that you put the dot below or the two points after. It represents a lot of things, but here the point is not Sanskrit itself. The point is that in Ayurveda, it's better for us to take Adana Kala, Kala and Visarga Kala as Ritucharya fundamentals for a proper understanding of Ritucharya. This means that um, we should consider two halves of the year, at least in the um, classical point of view. Later we will discuss this point itself. But for now, we are just going through uh, what's um, commonly uh, spoken in Ashtanga Hridaya or Charaka song. There is going to be one half that comes from the point when the sun, is the day starts to be bigger and another point when the day starts to be uh, lesser. Um, this process, when it's in the North Hemisphere, when you are in the winter solstice, 21 December, you change if you are in the uh, Southern Hemisphere. It, day by day, the day length, the amount of sunlight will increase. In the 
North Hemisphere is going to be from the 21 December to 21 June. And in the Southern Hemisphere is going to be from the 21 June to uh, 21 December. This is the time when every day the amount of sunlight time increases. Okay? This is going to be equal in the classics as Adana Kala. Visarga Kala is going to be the opposite. In the Northern Hemisphere, the 21 June to 21 December, day by day, the amount of light during the day from the sunrise to the sunset is going to decrease. And in the Southern Hemisphere, from the 21 December to 21 June, day by day, the span of daylight is going to decrease and the span of night moonlight is going to be increasing. So, according to Vedic point of view, the sun is responsible for giving heat to the system, Ushna, and the moon is giving uh, Shita, is giving uh, coldness, but coldness is not the proper word here. Ushna is Ruksha. Uh, sun uh, Gunas are going to decrease the amount of Rasa in the planet. Chandra, Moon, Soma, uh, Gunas like Shita and Snigda is going to be favorable to the increase of the rasa in the body of the people there. But please pay attention now. When you just put on the oven uh, to start to cook something there, it doesn't mean that the exact moment that you put on in the oven, the oven is going to be hot. It just means that from the point that you turn on, the Adana Kala in the system, moment by moment, the temperature inside the oven is going to be hotter. That's a fact. But in the beginning, it's not hot. In the beginning, it's cold, even though the Adana Kala button is on. The same is true when we start the Visarga Kala um, period. And the moment that you turn off the oven, it doesn't mean that the oven is going to be cold. Please remember this fact. Okay? From the starting point of Adana Kala to, to the midpoint of it, that is going to be the equinox. Even though the temperature is going up, the temperature is still not high in that part of the planet. From the midpoint of Adana Kala onwards, it's hot and it's also getting hotter. From the uh, solstice point, the uh, Adana Kala is going to be finished and we are going to still be losing temperature, but it's still going to be hot till the equinox of autumn. And from the equinox of autumn to the solstice of winter, again is going to be without uh, receiving energy from too much energy from the sun, it's going to be losing temperature and it's going to be more cold. So, in this circle, if we will consider the points that we start the Adanakala here and we go up to there, to the other side. The middle point is going to be starting to be hot. This area in the right is going to be increasing the hot, but it's going to be more hot every day. And when we start the Visarga Kala, there is still going to be a hot period within the Visarga Kala. The same as in the opposite, there is going to be a cold period within the hot period. So roughly in a modern way, or you can say a European way, 
You can call this spring, summer, autumn and winter. But in the classical uh, retuchario, we have a kind of six phases, six retu, six uh, seasons. They are going to be called Shishira, Vasanta, Grishma, Varsha, Sharat, and Hemanta. We are going to discuss this in the other videos if we really need to have the six seasons everywhere in the planet and what is the importance of having these shadow ritus in the classical Ayurveda. But the main point now is to understand that within the Adhanakala we are going to only have one true thing. Every day the span of daylight is going to be increasing. This is true. Completely true, as my teacher say, 100% true, everywhere in the planet, if you are in the Adana Kala. If you are in the Visarga Kala, every day, now pay attention, the span of night time is going to be increasing. And this is going to be mainly understood in Ayurveda as the body capacity to sustain rasa inside, to sustain blood, to sustain plasma, to sustain uh, the ocean of life in itself. And please remember, during the first part of the Adana Kala and during the first part of the Visarga Kala, even though you are in that Kala, the effect of it is not appearing itself, just like when you turn on the oven. It's not completely hot just because you turn on that, okay? Usually people try to say that when in the Adana Kala, doesn't matter where you are in the Adana Kala, it's going to be hot in temperature, and in the Visarga Kala, doesn't matter, it's going to be cold in temperature. This is not true. This is like the thermometer in the oven showing. Temperature is increasing, and now temperature is decreasing, okay? So these are the fundamentals for the proper understanding of Ritucharya. Ritucharya. Now we are going for the fundamentals of Ritucharya and we are going to speak a little bit of Vata, Pinda, and Kappa and so on. This is going to be in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this first part and see you in the next video. If you can, if you like, uh, please subscribe to our channel and also uh, share this video with people that might find this interest and this formation interest. In Instagram they usually say, tag a friend. <laughs> uh, it's not necessary to tag a friend, but share with everyone that you feel that's going to be glad to receive this information. See you in the next video. Om Gurave Namaham.